Welcome to the Unbothered Moms, where we are shifting our perspectives and letting letting shit shit go. go. I'm Bridget. I'm Kat. And today we're going to be discussing one of our favorite topics, parenting. Specifically, the different views on parenting, some which are psychological um, and some which are more social in nature. Because we're not psychologists, we are going to be talking about the social buckets that we feel are most relevant to us and our friend groups as it pertains to parenting. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's dig in. Let's do it. So there's about 10 different buckets that we came up with um, and kind of, you know, bucketed ourselves or friends that we know into. Um, And I wanted to start off, which one of the list of 10 that we came up with Mm -hmm. would you feel most represents your parenting style my parenting style that's kind of hard because like as we talk about them everyone will see why because i'm not in a bucket Hmm. i am bucketless (laughs) i kind of take a little bit of everything okay into my parenting style um i know some people are very routine and into this and that and no i'm kind of just my kids are happy. I try, you know, if they're happy and safe and healthy, yeah. I'm happy, safe, and healthy. But sometimes they need me to be a little bit of a helicopter. Mm. And sometimes, you know what? I am a little bit like, hey, um, I would like you to eat these organic bananas. Mm, okay. But other times I'm like, sure, go eat that. The Lucky Charms the and that l- <laughs> gave you. <sighs> Sorry. Yes, yes. So I'm kind <laughs> of all over the place. What about for you? So I definitely think I'm more of um so there's crunchy, silky, and then scrunchy is kind of a combination of those two. So crunchy parent style is more so like like hippie, organic, one with nature, like no shoes on. No shoes on, maybe this oil will fix your flu, like that kind of approach. Um and then silky is basically the complete opposite of that so fast food um very much believes in like science all that and I feel like I'm somewhere in between because like I'm not the organic person like my daughter eats fast food and Mm -hmm. you know sugary cereals such as Lucky Charms but I also do appreciate being one with nature and like my hippie side and I do have the oils and like I much prefer something that is going to be a homeopathic remedy versus, Mm -hmm. you know, modern day medicine, if it applies. If it applies. Yeah. We do that a lot, often. I'm like, hmm, they have this cough syrup called Highland. Yes. Yes, which really works well. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You wouldn't have known it because most people are like, oh, we'll take this the Tylenol or whatever, or whatever it is yeah that has a bunch of crap in it so um but that's interesting or if there's like a cough like oh sometimes yeah. she wakes up with a cough and I'm just like have a spoonful of honey spoonful of honey <laughs> isn't that in a movie a spoonful of sugar helps <gasps> the medicine oh. go down Mary oh, Poppins Mary that was my first Disney Barbie <laughs> shout out to Mary Poppins Mary is popping <laughs> <laughs> you and your weird <laughs> horse <laughs> slash SpongeBob laugh. Oh. So you know what? Sometimes okay. So first on our list, we have the wine slash beer parent. I definitely I relate just, to that one. Just gonna say that, and I think for us, I mean, I see it on Instagram all the time, and I feel like most of the time people are just making memes and jokes, and people take it so seriously to yeah. where they're like, "You have to have alcohol to be able to take care of your kid." No, but guess what? It helps. It helps sometimes because especially coming off of working all day and the kids coming home, homework, dinner, all of this. If I want to have a glass of wine or if I want to have a beer, shh. (laughs) Okay? I don't want to hear it. Like, I don't care. Like, everyone's being taken care of. And me. With that beer, that beer is taking care of me. Thank you. Yes. I agree. I'm definitely a a wine or beer parent. Because it's like sometimes, like you said, after a long day. Just to take the edge off and, like, chill out a little bit. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, like, I enjoy the taste of wine. Yeah. I enjoy a full-bodied red. Or, if it's summertime, maybe a light, crisp white. Regardless, I would like a glass. Yes. 
in your metal wine glass. Exactly. Thank you. So it does not shatter. Yes. And um, w- with saying that, though, it's like, do I think you should be getting wasted around your kids? Absolutely not. No. So <laughs> when I see these memes and stuff and people take it seriously, I'm like, it's for the gram. Like, people are just making funny videos. Yeah. Like, have you seen that Nikki woman? Love her. From Dunkin's. Or she always puts up Dunkin's. He's a Dunkin', Dunkin refresher yeah. today. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And she mixes her alcohol with her, like, Dunkin'. She's sponsored yeah, by Dunkin' Donuts. She is. And she's not, like, people talk so much crap on her in the comments. Great mom you are, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like. And she's making money off of this post. So Literally. And she probably mouth. had that one. One sip. One sip or even one drink. And her kids are taken care of. So, shh. I just can't. I know. And, and to each your own. Like, some people just don't drink, or some people can't yeah. handle it, or whatever. Um, but I think there's no fault in wanting to have a drink or two as a parent. Like, everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. Yeah. yeah. Another one on our list is a competitive parent. Which, mm. speaking of moderation, some people go a little bit too far. Literally. With trying to do, and this is competitive, not again, in the sense of parenting. So wanting your kid to, like, be the best. So look at the science fair. Like, you, I definitely grew up with kids, like, where you're like, you didn't do that project. Oh, yeah. Like, your parent definitely did that science <laughs> that project your for you. dad's name all over it. Right. And it's like. Good job, Bob. <laughs> literally. Literally. <laughs> like, Ethan didn't do it. Bob definitely did. Mm-hmm. And then who's at the, who's being a proud papa at the science Bob. fair? Bob. 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 And you know when he gets home, he takes that prize. He takes a little blue ribbon, and he's like, yeah. Right. But I think that comes from maybe parents who haven't been fulfilled in their own lives or Mm. childhoods, that they're trying to get some of that back through their own children, which I think is one of the biggest thing, wrong things you can do with parenting, is trying to relive through your kids or to try to make them do things so that you feel a sense of, like, happiness or fulfillment. I'm like, that's just weird. Totally. Like, you should want them to be their own people. Um, you know, sorry if you missed out on something in your life. or right. if, You know, but that's not for your kids. That's not – you're burdening your kids by – Forcing them into what you want them to be or do. Yeah. Or a bucket. Like, my daughter, both me and my ex-husband – played sports division one athlete (laughs) not to brag um but our daughter's like i'm not a sports girl and that's hard for you that's hard for both i think most more for him but also for me because she comes to my field hockey games like she's there but what is she at the field hockey game she's a map she takes a lot of pride in being the mascot i know and i love that and i love it it's very unique it's very her and if she wants to be a mascot let her be a mascot. And you know what? The competitive parent would say, no, yeah. your dad and I are both athletes. You need to go do this. And then, like, work them really hard to where they hate it. So yeah, it's like, I even bought her point? a stick. I think she's touched it three – your daughter's touched it more than, yeah. than mine. <laughs> Get whacking it around. <laughs> but I think that's so interesting, the way that happens. Or even just, like, my kid looks the best at school every day. Their hair is gelled. My kid – you know, I like got an award, yep. like it's it's great. Like, but I don't want to take anything away from Mm-mm. you know kids who get that stuff. But like, make sure that it's for them and not something that you're pushing them into, and that it's done just naturally. Yeah, you know, some I've been around kids who are just so smart, so athletic, like the all around like champion in the class, yeah, or grade champion. And it's child. just it's just who they are. Um. But you can tell when kids have these parents who are so pushy. And your heart kind of goes out to them because you're Mm -hmm. like, oh, man, I wish you could just be a kid and just do what you want to do. Yeah. Um, So I definitely see that within some parents sometimes. And I'm like, oh. But, I mean, could be worse. Yeah. Could be worse. It could be worse. You could be a workout or fitness parent. Just kidding. No, (laughs) let's let's talk about that, though. (laughs) What is that? So workout fitness parent is not like me who just wears leggings every day, but it's somebody who is, you know, that's like their personality is like fitness. Yeah. Yeah. Dumbbells. (laughs) Squats. And I think it's great. Like I have a Peloton in my house. You know, my daughter sees me using that, like doing weights or something like that. I love that you can portray that healthy lifestyle for them. But when it's like, 
oh, like, come join the gym. Or, like, oh, I don't know. I know. It pisses me off. You just just see the people. And I see the people at daycare drop-off to where I'm like, oh, are you going to the gym after this? Or did you go there prior? Or maybe both. And also, why do you have a full face of makeup if you're going to the gym? Insecure. Or there's someone hot there they're trying to impress. Mm. Do what you gotta do. But I do I do think, listen, I wish I worked out more. I do. Oh, yeah. I wish. Same. I mean, I pay for s- different subscriptions of things to work out that I don't go to. I have a gym, and I have one of those fancy mirrors that you can work out or with. Or just a, you know, a donation. Donation. Uh, donation, if you will. <laughs> um, and, but there's parents out there who that's all they ever think about. And it's like, find a different way to, you know, go to the gym in the morning. Have go to the gym at night. Have a glass of wine. Have a glass of wine. <laughs> it's disgusting. But no, it's just um, like there has to be. I think of okay, this might sound bad, but I think of a lot of mainline moms when I think mm-hmm. of that. Right. Yeah. Just you know that they were just at. But well, they're right. They might not have a, a day job because they don't need one. Which shout mm-hmm. out to them. Shout, shout out, out to their we are husbands not or spouses. Yet. Um, and you know, they're at Panera in like workout clothes, just eating some spin. They might be doing like a Tabata or yoga later. Yeah. And that is great. It's just, you could just tell. It just annoys me. When they're a workout. And I have friends that are fitness instructors and yep. coaches. I'm like, that's their job. Like I wouldn't put them in that bucket. No. You know what I mean? There's a special, there's special people out there who you yeah. just see and you know, that the gym is everything to them. They love it. The gym is like, here's their kid. And they probably. Here, and the gym is like here. <laughs> and they probably drink green juice, which is disgusting. Oh, I kind of like the the earthy. We, it tastes like earth. Ugh. Like dirt, kind of. Yeah. And I'm like, one with the earth, man. I guess I'm kind of crunchy. I guess I'm sulky in that sense. You better <laughs> add a spoonful <laughs> of sugar to help that go down. I could never. No. Nope. Actually, I tried it once, and I would never do it again. Yeah, it just tastes like dirt. Yeah, it's I've disgusting. had salads before that taste a little dirty. Like being like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, when you have it like a, in a liquid cup and you're just like choosing and you paid, oh, a lot of money, wheatgrass, yeah, fifteen dollars mm-hmm. to eat dirt. Go outside. Mm-hmm. I'll eat your wheatgrass. I drink your plenty, wheatgrass. Plenty, plenty full outside, <laughs> and it's three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. We like free things. Crazy. So then. I think tying into the workout fitness, yeah, the influencer mm, parent, yeah, because you know they're everywhere nowadays. Everywhere, and I have. How do you wild. feel about? And I follow some moms on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I love them. But have you seen people on Instagram or social media where you're like, "Dude, like, do better for your kid," where it's kind of like embarrassing the things they're doing. And their kids are involved yeah. in these things. And mm-hmm. I'm like, ugh. Like kids and family. There's um, a court case going on right now in regards to a family that <coughs> at the they're getting tried for like child abuse, essentially. It goes deeper into just like influencing. But that was kind of the start of it all is like portraying this like great family. And we're going to record everything and like make money off oh, it. Oh, I saw that. The mom. Yeah. But ended like up being ab- using them for like videos and, and stuff. And the neighbor and stuff. But like at what cost right like yeah you're making money and like maybe it's fun but also your children like what are the labor laws with that i know you wonder labor labor laws but then they're also not really growing up with how real life is supposed to be right it's like stage it is stage camera's always in your face i'm sure your parents asking you to do things take one take two take three like i think that's interesting and i i get it i there's people I follow that I love, but it seems very natural, the things they're doing. Yeah. And not not like it's fake or staged at all. Yeah. Um, and I do see how people like me or anyone might see this and then try to emulate them. Right. right. Which is kind of like a problem. Totally. That's where it's like a problem. Yeah. You could see someone and be like, oh, you're a really good parent. Hey, you had good advice on this. I'd like to try that. But when you maybe have someone who is lacking confidence or – feels that their parenting isn't up to par with other people, they might be watching these influencers being like, I need to do better. And it's like, it's fake. It's fake. It's fake. And like also maybe that's fine. just like their style. Like another mm-hmm. parenting style on this list is type A. So somebody that needs to have like a regimen and need, things need to go a certain way. So like if that's the style, 
a line that's great yeah but it needs yeah i agree there needs to be like a line (laughs) and also a self-awareness to people who are consuming this media and information just to understand like hey maybe they're making a perfect hard pumpkin but maybe my kid wants a one-eyed zombie and that's okay (laughs) exactly and so funny i saw um my sister aunt yesterday Mm. shout out sent me the funniest meme yesterday and it was like watch me set up my perfect fall decor on the on my outside front door whatever and it was a woman holding a pumpkin and she's like getting ready to put it out and then she slams it down and she's like actually just kidding because i have so many things (laughs) to do in my life i'm not doing it for you i'm not doing it for instagram i'm just gonna go live my life because i have so many other things going on right now but it's true and some some people take joy in doing that and like that's something that brings them a lot of joy and i'm like Mm -hmm. that's fabulous that's not me yeah that would stress you out stress me out like i have other things going on but you could see how some people feel pressured yeah by social media Mm mm-hmm to do things like that. And it's like, I've felt that. I've fallen under it. Yeah. I'm getting better, getting unbothered by things. Love it. Because sometimes I definitely feel like even decorating for Halloween. That's like, why I do it so early. Ugh. I've been decorated for three weeks yeah. probably. But it's because if I wait until October 1st, I'm not doing it. Uh-huh. I'm going to put up one pumpkin, <coughs> maybe a skeleton, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to start being like it's too much and then i'll just decorate for christmas yeah and what i was going with that is so i used to be a huge halloween girly Mm. but then like kids and everything and it just like became a lot to put everything out yeah just for me because like stuff to put away in the attic or whatever but um so my son yes yesterday saw our neighbors put out all this stuff in their yard yeah why can't we have headstones why can't we have big blow-ups i wish we were rich so we could have everything that's what he says to me and i'm like what sir sit exactly. down exactly and he's like our <laughs> house isn't cool <gasps> i want a cool house and i felt in- i almost like cried i was like pretty upset about it because i'm like yeah. i have all this halloween stuff have i been like taking that away from them by not putting it out and like no but it's like i've been so busy so like my husband brought down all the halloween busy stuff with what oh stuff for your children. I know, literally. Yes. <laughs> like so I I felt like this like kind of like pain in my heart Aww. of like, oh, like I've been I've had the stuff, I just haven't done it and yeah. like now he's making me feel bad for not doing it. So, anyways. So you doing that tonight? We got the Halloween stuff out <laughs> yesterday night and we put some stuff out and um actually we went to Target. Ooh, and Target has some okay, good wait, five, five-year-olds are learning things because he goes like this. Hey, can we get a can we get a blow up to put outside? And I'm like, a blow up. He's like, yeah, an inflatable. And I was like, ah, I don't know, buddy. Like, we already have so much stuff. We right. don't need an inflatable. I'm like, Christmas is coming up. We got a couple inflatables for outside. And he's like, well, next door is really cool. You get an inflatable. I'm like, okay, we'll see. He goes, no. And I'm like, what? He's like, pinky promise. And he put up his pinky. And I was like, oh, my God, he's learning this. Like, he never knew pinky promise. So (laughs) school taught him a a pinky promise. And then I was, like, shaking, giving my pinky. (laughs) Like, what am I promising right now? But it was so cute that I had to do it. So we -hmm. walked out with the cheapest inflatable, $25, three-foot ghost. Oh, that's cute. Who they named Ghosty. I'm like, you could just call him Ghost Malone. That's what I'm going to call him. Right? I mean, just We saying. could probably draw. We could probably put some tattoos on Ooh, him. Ooh, Ghost Malone and put some <laughs> <laughs> music in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of love that. Yeah. But that's where, like, the influencer and stuff came out. And I feel like you see all these people who look like they're living these perfect lives and able to manage their time so efficiently, and it's not real life. So mm-hmm. we're here to tell you it's okay to not put out decorations. Yeah, just enjoy what you see online. That's what I do. I'm yeah. like, wow, that's really cool. Wow, that's great. It's great Have for fun their putting house. it away. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I think of too. Yeah. I'm like, ew. It's a lot. It's too much. It's too much. Let's talk about this one. Yeah. So the next one, which is also, it kind of teeters the line of social as well as um, psychology, but it's the helicopter slash bulldozer parenting style. So uh, similar but different. So the helicopter style is somebody that is 
very much involved overly in their child's lives know ev- knows every single thing doesn't really give them a lot of independence and then just basically to be able to control the situation right and the bulldozer style is when a parent is basically taking um, obstacles out of their child's way in order to make them more successful in getting through life and make their life a little bit easier so both aren't great for different <laughs> reasons um but yeah, I mean, I think my mom, we always joked with her and so did other parents and other kids that I grew up with that she was very much a helicopter mom. Mm-hmm. And that led me to get really good at lying. Yep. Well, I thought I was good at it. I don't <laughs> think I was that good at it. But yeah, because you want your independence, you know, yeah. like that's what you you want to be. You want to be an adult when you're a kid. Right. And when yep. you're a, an adult, you're like, this sucks. Oh, yeah. But, it, you know, she was always right there. Yeah, and I think Which is nice. She cared. It is nice, and I think that it's uh, about letting go of control. Yeah, which is a really hard thing for some people to do. Um, my husband jokes a lot that I'm a helicopter, and I'm not. You've seen me parent. No. I'm very not. Um, but there are some times that I like to be there, and it's okay. So I think you can kind of be a mix between all these different parenting styles. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think also like the helicopter maybe comes from people who wish they had uh, a little more security maybe as kids yes. themselves and that's i think where my mom came from mm-hmm. is that her parents weren't super involved yeah so she was like i'm gonna be involved i'm gonna be there i'm gonna know everything I'm gonna that's gonna happening everything i'm gonna know every teacher i'm gonna know every principal mm-hmm. and i also think it comes with when your kids are young helicopter you think of someone who can't let their kid play at the park without like oh my god are you okay oh my god that's dangerous it's like, like let them fall for me though like oof, i don't know what it is i hate going to playgrounds i hate it i think it's the most boring thing i love it ever because it's like look at me like five thousand times and i'm like maybe it's because there's All two you gotta do is look there's oh. two so i'm constantly yeah, like one. going both ways and then like it is kind of nerve-wracking because some of the things they go on i'm like i <laughs> i saw a thing online where it said Hey, this is the guy who tests out um, playgrounds. Mm-hmm. He, Wait, Blippy? No, no, it's like just a man on <laughs> Instagram, but he goes around to different playgrounds. He's like, "Oh, look at me! This is so fun!" <laughs> and he shows you the different <laughs> ways you could like get hurt, like you know, because some of these yeah. playgrounds, you're like, "Wow, that's really high!" The kid goes up there and just falls off. Or even certain, there's like these things that spin with like a little disc, and then it's like this swirly or like criss not crystal like a zigzag thing like a pole yeah. sticking up and then it's about you know the gravity and stuff like that but i'm like it looks fun to like a three-year-old but they're eating shit exactly 10 out of 10 times exactly and so that's when i i maybe am a little bit of a helicopter because like if they fall like normally i don't care but at a playground i feel like i'm not just on edge because mm. i'm waiting for one of them to just be like yeah and jump off the top of something because they're crazy yeah there's and not a lot of fear yeah. in your children. There's when it not. Comes to that kind there of is stuff. not. They're yeah. just nuts. They're and if they're both fighting over who gets to the top of something first, mm. one of them is falling because they do not back down. Because they will fight each other. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think for me, like when my it's husband relational. says I'm a heli- helicopter parent, I laugh because I'm like, no. But at the park I am. Yeah. I can't relax. That's why I'm like, you go take them to the park because I'm just gonna be even when they're on the tire swing, I get like anxious. Because I'm like, he's pushing them too high. What if they fall off and hit one of the roots? It's just crazy. But normally I'm chill. <laughs> but just things where they're like going to crack their head open. Because yeah, I mean, I'm not looking forward to that. I always say like if, if my daughter's doing something, I'm like, hey, listen, like it's not in the plans to go to the hospital today. So like knock that mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. And she'll be like, oh, OK. Yeah. Like she knows now. Yep. I'm like, we just don't have time to go to the hospital. Sorry. Nope, not today. Yeah. And my kids always say i'll be like hey that's dangerous don't do that now they both know because i'll crack my head open yeah and i'm like yes <laughs> yes glad we understand that that's like my daughter and i we talk about like lying and like i'm like your nose is growing so like when she now when she tells Pinocchio. yeah now when she tells a lie she'll be like um mommy is my nose growing and i'm like <laughs> it is yeah and then she's like oh she tells on herself. It's yeah. hilarious. I love that. Now, do you know any bulldozer parents? I don't think I do. I um I n- know a couple. Mm-hmm. Um <coughs> and I think it's not people that I 
and parent friends with, I think I've seen the residuals of a bu- of bulldozer parents from their grown adult children. Mm-hmm. So adults that cannot cope with life, <laughs> yeah. normal life, or if there is an obstacle or a situation that deters them from their normal course, they like freak out. They don't know how to handle it. Mm-hmm. And so I wouldn't say that I personally am friends with any bulldozer parents that I know right now, but I would say I definitely have seen the residual effects of bulldozer parenting. Yeah. I think that's so insane to be a bulldoze bulldozer parent. Yeah. Because, like, your kid has to go through some shit to be able to come out on the other side, like, with character. Yeah. Because eventually, guess what? That kid is going to be alone. Right. And they're going to have to try to figure shit out. And they're going to be left, like, worse from how you raise them. Right. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah. And then intentional parenting. That's the last one that we haven't really touched on yet. That is more so just, like, your child is your life. So you are in very intentional with every move that you make from a parenting perspective as it pertains to your child, your life even. Um and it's it just seems like a lot. <laughs> to a me. lot of work because <laughs> everything is work. planned out. Everything is planned out. Everything has a purpose. Yes. Yes. And like I just couldn't. I'm intentionally not being intentional with my children. Wow, okay. Hey, they're Ooh, being no raised card. Th- they're being raised great. Um but I don't have time for that. Yeah. I th- I think when I think of intentional parenting, I think of like I don't know a stay-at-home mom like where like she takes her job very seriously and like has art crafts every day like has things broken up to make sure that they're growing and learning and doing and seeing right. and yeah like you're not getting a frozen ego waffle but you're getting like a homemade pancake that has a face that has different like textures mm-hmm. and like fruits on it which is super cute and i just don't have the time for it yeah um and that's I'm not saying that that's the only type of intentional parenting, but that's what comes to mind when I think of that. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I think I think I got a little bit of everything mixed into me. Yeah. And I think as parents, we should have a little bit of different parenting styles mixed within us because if you're doing one way, you're doing it the wrong way. Sorry. No, I agree. Yeah. I par- l- listen, every day is a new freaking game with our kids you have no idea <laughs> yeah. what's happening you have no idea what they're going to say that day how they're feeling so guess what you have to switch it up sometimes yeah so if you're just going in with one way you're going to fail you know what I, d- I was just thinking about this and like i sometimes i'm the wine parent sometimes i am the scrunchy parent and then recently with this readathon at school i kind of low-key was the competitive parent i'm like okay you don't want to do sports but we're going to read some goddamn books i didn't sign up for that Oh, we are we are have exceeded all of our goals already. Oh, day four, baby. Do I need to sign up? I don't think so. I don't. I don't think you have to. Oh. I was just like, this is gonna be our Olympics because <laughs> she does not want to do any sports. So we are gonna read so many books and raise so much money. Wait, how do you raise the money? Uh, I texted my friends with a link. Okay. Oh, God. I'm like, okay, see, this is where so I'm feeling hyped. bad about myself now. I'm <laughs> feeling like a bad parent because I was, I didn't even look. There's been so many things coming from school. Yeah. Um, it's like well, stressing it's, it's me every out. every day. It's every day that we get new flyers and things happening. Events. And so I literally, the readathon, like whatever, like I just haven't even looked at it. And now I'm like, oh, we're raising money for like a great cause apparently. Well, it's the school. Well, it's, I mean, that's a great cause. That was messed up. Sorry. Okay, guys, <laughs> this is what I'm going to do later. I'm going to look into it <laughs> <laughs> and read some books, I guess. Let me sign up for it. Oh, um, yeah, that's my, my competitive nature came out. And then I, I saw it in my daughter. Like She saw the little like bar go up and up every time. Okay, see, that's and good. So she was pumped about it. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, there's something in there. You there's just got to figure out how to get it out. We're feeding it. Yeah. That's awesome. So now let's talk about yeah. the unbothered. Batty of, of the, the week. We didn't plan that, but that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I know. So this week's unbothered baddie or baddies baddies is going to be the friend group that we met at our daycare. Yay! Yeah, we um we love you guys so much, and we kind of just wanted to think of 
we were thinking of parents who we really love and um I don't even know that we love and you know c- can be supported with yep. and supported through the experience of parenting a lot of us for the first time mm-hmm. um and it's just nice that when we looked at this list we were like oh like within the group there's definitely multiple buckets that are checked off through this parent group and i think that's one of the reasons why we all love each other and we get along really well and we actually choose to hang out with each other and our kids yes <laughs> whether it's with the kids or without the kids is because we kind of balance each other out in that way yeah and that goes for the moms as well as the, the dads which as is the really dads, cool. yeah and that's a great way to put it is that we balance each other out we actually recently had a play date and all of us stepped in with each other's kids at different points yeah like at which one, was at so one point cool. none of us had our none own of kids. us had our own kids we were all hanging with each other's kids and it just felt so natural and comforting to be able to be in a situation like that and to have it feel like okay yeah like no one cared that we were with each other's kids we all just felt supported yeah and it was awesome so you guys are the unbothered baddies of the week the best and uh, that's all we have for today's episode we are so happy that you joined us you can check us on instagram for all the behind the scenes tiktok as well at the unbothered moms and you can get us wherever you get your podcasts especially on apple and spotify and like follow subscribe share us with your friends we will see you next week see ya